Hi, everyone. I'm Elena Pinto for Pro Cannabis Media, and welcome to Weed Talk News. While Congress starts to work out the kinks of federal cannabis reform on Capitol Hill, the rest of the country is showing its solidarity with the movement. Members of the U.S. Hemp Roundtable have sent a letter to congressional leaders in support of the Cannabis Administration Opportunity Act. The group says it applauds the bill's introduction, but is also recommending changes to provisions within the legislation that would undermine the hemp industry. The other continued effort on the Hill is the Safe Banking Act, and some advocates are beginning to feel hopeful it'll pass. However, members of the Cannabis Regulators of Color Coalition say the bill is not a safe bet to achieve fair and equitable access to financial services for those in the cannabis industry. Next week, the group will host a panel analysis of the Safe Banking Act, including recommendations to improve fair access to cannabis banking. Meanwhile, more states are confirming they are looking to go green. Florida-born country music singers, the Bellamy Brothers, have partnered with TrueLeave to launch a statewide initiative called Smart and Safe Florida and the Bellamy Brothers. They hope to put the issue on the ballot as a constitutional amendment in 2024. And in the heart of the country, Missouri's Secretary of State confirmed this week activists have turned in enough ballot petitions to place a cannabis reform measure before voters. That means an initiative to legalize adult use cannabis will appear on the state's November ballot. Brandon Jones kicks off our state to state roundup with the latest from Missouri. Hey everybody, it's Brandon Jones from Distribution Maven with the Missouri Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. And yes, it happened. In November, adult use recreational cannabis will be on the ballot here in Missouri. So it was a little bit of pushback. We didn't know if the signature is going to be met. There was a lot of talk about some of the districts didn't have enough signatures, but the petition actually did get passed and put on the ballot by the Secretary of State. So in November, Legal Mode 2022 will actually be on the ballot. There are some people now that is talking about whether is that the best initiative. Uh, obviously, it's the first, so people are excited and might just put, you know vote just because it's available. Uh, I would obviously urge everyone to do some research, figure out exactly what the uh, bill is going to propose and make sure that you're you know a fan of everything that's on it. Also, we had a great uh, event here uh, last night, 810, the local uh, sports radio AM station has celebrated 100 years. Lots of uh, local sports stars hanging out, doing a lot of stuff for charity, silent auctions, lots of uh, speakers, some uh, really cool live music, and just a lot of the best people in the area from sports were there talking, having fun, uh, just uh, being all about uh, the radio station here and supported. It was quite fun talking about uh, the athletes seeing their change. A lot of proponents of CBD. Tim Gronhard, uh, former Chiefs player, is a big proponent for CBD and hemp. He works with American Shaman here in Kansas City. Uh, Christian Okoye, the Nigerian nightmare, was there. Great guy, also a supporter of Plants Over Pills. Uh, Tyrod Taylor and Sharon Collins, former KU basketball players, along with Coach Bill Self. A lot of the KU players were there as well, too but they were uh, obviously supporting the plants over pills. It was great to see just the attitude of the people changing. So here in Missouri, again, November, the ballot for adult use legal mode 22 will be on the ballot. Make sure you do some research and get out there and vote. Again, I'm Brandon Jones from Distribution Maven. This is Missouri Canners Report for We Talk News. Have a great week, everybody. The green rush in the Empire State is about to begin. New York cannabis regulators have just announced they will officially begin accepting applications for the state's first adult use retailer licenses in just two weeks. And the first licenses will be reserved for people impacted by the drug war. Those applications can start rolling in on August 25th. There are more licenses going out in the Green Mountain State too. The Vermont Cannabis Control Board awarded a handful more licenses to businesses this week and hosted roundtable discussions with the public about the state's current programs. Jesse Lynn Dolan has the details in this week's Vermont Report. I'm Jesse Lynn Dolan from Nurse Grown Organics and Vermont Cannabis Nurses, and this is the Weed Talk News Vermont Report. This week, there were two medical cannabis roundtable talks organized by the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. The purpose of these events was to get feedback from the public on medical use cannabis program. Both dispensary representatives, patients, and caregivers spoke up about the much needed changes in the program. With plenty of public comment to fill the allotted comment times, 
The Cannabis Control Board recognizes the need for more focus on patients. When the Vermont Cannabis Control Board wasn't listening to public comments and feedback, they were busy awarding 19 more cultivation licenses this week, with nearly 150 licenses in total so far. On August 21st, Moksha's Elevated Experience will be hosting at a yet-to-be-disclosed location, Elevated Under the Stars. It will be an infused family-style Italian meal and campout with a heady gift bag and dab connoisseur services. Visit Moksha Experience on Instagram for more info. Also on the 20th, a free to attend farmer's market will be held in Ferrisburg for consumers to learn about products from local growers and makers. Of course, both events are 21 plus. That's the Vermont Report for Weed Talk News. I'm Vermont's cannabis nurse and Gangier, Jesse Lynn Dolan. Lawmakers in Massachusetts have given the green light to the idea for cannabis consumption lounges and cafes across the state. But while legislation has passed, it seems to be taking a while to get things up and running. Weed Talk News producer Tori Chamberlain explains why in this week's Bay State Report. Hey guys, here's the Bay State Report for this week. Massachusetts lawmakers passed that legislation for cannabis lounges back in July, but it's been kind of stalled ever since, and here's why. When legalization passed back in 2016, the legislation required that cities and towns ask their residents whether or not to allow these sites and their answer could then maybe trigger a petition. The problem is, except for just a few cities, there are no provisions in the state about initiative petitions at the municipal level. So there's really no way for people to push those petitions forward in any meaningful way. But the amendments passed in July address all of this and the state can Cannabis Control Commission says it's now working to review the law and get all the necessary components into place to start issuing those licenses for lounges. In other business news, Marimed has announced its Nature's Heritage brand of craft flower and concentrates will be a presenting sponsor of the Cultivators Cup, which is one of the largest festivals and awards competitions in Massachusetts. And also, a few weeks ago, we took you to air in Boston's Back Bay. The company is expanding its footprint here in the Bay State with a new medical and adult use dispensary now open in Watertown and a new cultivation facility getting ready to open in Milford. And I will actually be touring that facility next week to give you guys an inside look. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But that's the Bay State Report for this week. I'm Tori Chamberlain for Pro Cannabis Media. A product problem plaguing a popular edible company. Chiba Chews has temporarily removed its new rosin infused gummy line called Melts from Colorado dispensaries following a mold scare. There's been no official recall announcement because Chiba Chews doesn't believe any affected products reach consumers, but the company has removed all melts lines from Colorado shelves for the time being and hopes to have them back by September. Meanwhile, it's earnings season for cannabis companies. Deborah Borchardt takes a look at what's happening in this week's Green Market Report. I'm Deborah Borchardt, and this is the business update for We Talk News. Earnings season is underway and we had some big names deliver their numbers this week. One of the biggest was Trulieve, who reported revenues rose 49% to $320 million in the quarter. Now, while that sounds great, the company threw some cold water on its guidance, citing inflation. Having said that, Trulieve still plans on selling over a billion dollars of cannabis for the year. Weed Maps also reported that their revenue increased 24% to $58.3 million. But here again, the company cautioned that in its outlook, it expects total revenue to be flat to down and in the mid single digit percentage area. Now on a positive note, Cureleaf was excited to report that New Jersey was a home run for the company. It reported revenue of approximately $338 million and noted that the Garden State was a big part of its success in growing those sales. Now, over 25 companies reported earnings this week, so if you need more detail on any of them, head over to the Green Marker Report. And this has been your business update, and I'm Deborah Borchardt. Being a cannabis patient in Washington, D.C. just got easier. Washington, D.C.'s mayor tweeted this week to let residents know they can now self-certify for the district's medical cannabis program via an online application form. 
And get this, program fees are waived for new and renewal patients and caregivers for the next week. Vote Pro Podcast has more from the nation's capital this week, but at the same time, regulators also say they're going to crack down on gifting cannabis. Here he is with more from the nation's capital. Hi, this is Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast, here with the Weed Talk News, DC Report. The National Institutes of Health posted a request for information this week aimed at identifying barriers to cannabis and cannabinoid research. Citing the need for better understanding the plant's clinical uses and therapeutic potential, NIH is seeking input from the research community. In particular, the agency wants information regarding such impediments to research as the status of cannabis as a Schedule I drug and the limited availability of cannabis for clinical trial. Interested parties have until October 15th to respond to the RFI. Regulators in the District of Columbia are set to begin cracking down on cannabis gifting next month. The action is expected to have a significant impact on D.C.'s thriving gray market. The practice has been prevalent among certain retailers in the district since 2014 when it became legal to possess and use cannabis but not to buy and sell it. Gifting operators typically raise the price of certain mainstream products such as t-shirts and other items then offer cannabis products free with the purchase. Licensed medical marijuana dispensaries in D.C. claim these operators are engaging in unfair and illegal competition. A joint cannabis task force created under the district's Alcoholic Beverage Regulation Administration warns that businesses engaging in cannabis gifting may be subject to fines or other enforcement actions. Elections officials in Maryland have finalized the language for cannabis legalization referendum to appear on the ballot in November as question four. The question before the voters is, quote, do you favor the legalization of the use of cannabis by an individual who is at least 21 years of age on or after July 1st, 2023 in the state of Maryland? Last April, the Maryland General Assembly approved a measure to put the legalization question on the ballot as a constitutional amendment. The legislature also passed a complementary bill to establish an implementation framework should Maryland voters approve question four. It provides for the use, distribution, possession, regulation, and taxation of cannabis within the state. That's the Weed Talk News DC report for this week. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. The prisoner battle in Russia over Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan continues. But now one U.S. senator is telling the White House there's another U.S. citizen who deserves to be designated as wrongfully detained. Claudia Post has that story and much more in this week's Pennsylvania Report. I'm Claudia Post for Scarlet Express, and I'm here in the Keystone State reporting for We Talk News. A spokesperson for Pennsylvania Republican Senate candidate Mehmet Oz sent a statement accusing Democratic opponent John Fetterman, who is currently the lieutenant governor, of being the nation's most prominent trust fund advocate of marijuana legalization. Now, what exactly does that mean? I, I, I don't understand. But... That, of course, is Dr. Oz. We don't understand him, and we don't understand why he's here. Last week, I reported on Mark Fogel, the Pennsylvania school teacher who was serving a prison sentence in Russia for possessing medical cannabis. This week, Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania said the Biden administration should give a wrongfully detained determination to Fogel because he has been a dedicated teacher for decades, teaching the children of diplomats. Of course, I think all of that is theater holding these people. For what reason? Of course, they probably want us to release some bandito from our prisons, but that's politics. Pennsylvania medical cannabis grower and processor Calypso Enterprise is calling on the state to provide equitable relief for independent marijuana companies after it laid off 55 workers at its facility in Erie. 
was a very big company. The layoffs amount to nearly 75% of the company's staff. Calypso's layoffs come only weeks after another Pennsylvania grower, Hanging Gardens, laid off dozens of workers and reduced others' hours. I guess my question is, why is this happening? when we have sometimes shortages at the dispensaries. I, I, I don't know. I wanna look into that and find out why that's happening. Uh, and I will report back next week about it. So that's a wrap from Pennsylvania. I'm Claudia Post from Scarlet Express, and I'll be back next week to talk about what's hot and what's not right here in the Keystone State. So from We Talk News, have a fabulous week. Employee efforts to unionize seem to be plaguing corporations everywhere, from Starbucks to Trader Joe's, and cannabis is no exception. In fact, some former dispensary employees in Seattle, Washington, claim their store was shut down over their interest in unionizing. Josh Kincaid has that story and more from Washington State. I'm Josh Kincaid from the Talking Hedge with the Washington State Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. Former Seattle cannabis dispensary employees claim that the owner closed the store to avoid unionizing. Labor laws protect unionized employees from many different forms of retaliation, including having shifts cut or hours reduced. One thing it doesn't protect against is a business owner simply taking their ball and going home. And that's exactly what former employees at Ponder, a recently closed Seattle cannabis shop, alleged that the owners did. Ponder workers filed to form a union in July of 2021, winning recognition via unanimous election on September 14th of the same year, but the store was closed less than four months later. Yet cannabis businesses cannot be closed for more than 30 days without forfeiting its license, suggesting that Ponder might have been in violation. But just recently, Forbidden Cannabis Club, a local chain of cannabis stores, launched an Instagram page for a new Seattle location with the same address as Ponder. So while it's impossible to determine whether closing the store was a union-busting move on the part of the owner, it seems clear that he wanted to sell or close the store. The story starts to get a little murky after the union was first formed when the owner started talking about wanting to close the store. The owner began to reduce the hours and duties of five employees who started the union. He later fired three and mentioning the store's impending closure in their termination letter. And former employees still feel strongly that the owner needs to either bargain with his workers in good faith or give back his license. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Next week, you guys are going to find out more about the Washington cannabis scene. But with that, we're going to have to roll up this Washington State Cannabis Report. I'm Josh Kincaid from the Talking Heads reporting for Weed Talk News. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out. In the Great White North, parts of Canada are paying back veterans in a big way. Officials in Ottawa are reimbursing a record number of veterans for medical cannabis. New figures show the federal government shelled out more than $150 million last year to former service members asking the government to pay for their cannabis. The Canadian feds are now on track to spend nearly $200 million for the same efforts. This is a great way to pay back people who have served the country and ensure them affordable access to plant medicine. So now let's check in with Debbie Facey for more on what's happening in Canada. Hi, this is Debbie Facey from We Talk News, your Canadian correspondent for the Canadian Cannabis Joint of the Week. This week, what we had was in Alberta, Due to the brazen robberies that have been going on, Alberta has decided to lift the laws when it came to having blackout vinyl that was going to be attracting the youth and under age of 19, under the age of 19. So with their windows vinyl lane changing, it's going to be something that's going to be great for not only their safety, but for also any sort of witnesses and any sort of police enforcement that may have to come in in order to do any sort of enforcement. Also this week, what which we had was a cyber breach, which more of a cyber hack, we should say. And it was more on our OCS. Our OCS in Ontario is a delivery service that is responsible for delivering to all of the legal retail cannabis stores. With that, which led to a halt in the deliveries, OCS has promised now to make sure that they have 
not only the precautions, but the safety also in hand to ensure that they do not have any sort of hiccups where there is such a breach or can a breach happen again in the future. What we also have just been able to find out due to our reports from Health Canada was that we had over 425 million grams of unsold cannabis destroyed last year. And when I mean destroyed, I mean as in put on fire and watch the blaze. Ontario has seen and does realize that not only is that an unsustainable way of distributing or getting rid of product that has not been unsold, but it has also kind of shown a lot of numbers to a lot of these LPs that their products and the number of products that is being distributed at one point may be too much at one time where they are in the end losing their profits and having to burn it like they did for 425 million grams of cannabis. I'm Debbie Fazy for We Talk News, your Canadian correspondent, and that was our weekly joint of the week. Israel has long been touted as the global leader in cannabis research, and now it looks like companies there are leading the way toward new techniques and innovations with cannabinoids. Danny Oberman reports from Jerusalem with the details. Hi, this is Danny Oberman from B2B Khan for Weed Talk News in southern Jerusalem at uh, Cafe Tal. The hottest news this week coming out of Israel is from a company called Terrigen. It's a subsidiary of Plant Arc Bio and Siach Medical. A number of companies in Israel are working on producing cannabinoids in bioreactors at price points that look to be competitive with commercially grown cannabis. Using a fungi-based formula, the cannabinoid CBG is being produced in, in a microorganism. We should expect announcements in the coming months about production of THC, CBD, and CBC. It's anybody's guess how this will affect the cannabis growers in the future. The next story is troubling. Many Israeli growers are in trouble, serious trouble. Univo is firing workers. Panaxia has announced they'll be moving operations from Israel to Malta. Bol Pharma screwed up their reporting and in fact lost money in 2021. In addition, there are reports that companies are holding hundreds of tons of unsold dried flour. This won't end well for many growers. The other side of the equation is that the cannabis medtech realm is absolutely thriving. Check out the websites of Israeli universities who almost all have departments for cannabis and cannabinoid research. This is Danny Overman, B2B Khan for We Talk News from Jerusalem, Israel. And finally, here's your chance to have a hand in crafting cannabis content at next year's South by Southwest Festival. The festival's official panel picker is now open to the public and lets you browse through a variety of panel discussion topics you may or may not want to see on the stages in Austin, Texas next year. But unlike previous years, now you can actually search by the term cannabis which gives you a whopping list of 73 different panel topics to potentially choose from. The window to vote closes on August 21st, so be sure to log on to panelpicker.sxsw.com to share your two stoner cents. It's always exciting to see more cannabis education opportunities coming to the public. After all, it's a whole new world of weed out there with a lot to learn and remember to use it wisely. That's it for Weed Talk News this week. I'm Elena Pinto for Pro Cannabis Media. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got. Hey everyone, it's Ryan from the Cannabis Connoisseur Podcast. If you're looking for ways to utilize cannabis to keep you healthy, strong, and sharp, come join us every Wednesday where we dive into the best ways to use cannabis to optimize your life. Topics include cannabis and athletics, cannabis for productivity, cannabis for anxiety, cannabis for a healthy immune system, and so much more. If you're a curious connoisseur, this show is for you. So please head over to our page and we're looking forward to seeing you this week. Bye.